the church's neglect of the Holy Spirit robs her of so much of the divine power that is hers by birth. The Bible bubbles with the promises of the Spirit's strength and examples of His extraordinary ministry, all of it given in grace to Christ's church for the glory of God, but also for our good and the well-being of the world that we're called to minister to. Listen to what Samuel Chadwick had to say about this. He said, the gift of the Spirit is the crowning mercy of God in Christ Jesus. It was for this that all the rest, the incarnation and crucifixion, the resurrection and the ascension were all preparatory to Pentecost. That's a powerful statement that might make some of us uncomfortable, but let it sink in for a minute. Chadwick continues, Without the gift of the Holy Spirit, all the rest would be useless. The great thing in Christianity is the gift of the Spirit, the essential, vital, central element in the life of the soul and the work of the church is the person of the Holy Spirit. To put this idea in a more succinct form, whatever God in His grace works in you and me, it is by the work of the Spirit. In previous episodes, I introduced you to the person of the Holy Spirit. Today, we turn our attention to His extensive ministry in and through the church, beginning with the Spirit's vital work in salvation. Welcome to Walk the Walk. The work of the Holy Spirit is very personal after the ascension of Jesus. Jesus promised his intimate involvement in our discipleship, and as a part of this growth, he shows us spiritual realities we never would have known. We can see by the Spirit's involvement in the great purpose of God in conforming us to the image of his Son. The Holy Spirit is the agent through which this spiritual change occurs. Besides these individual blessings, the Spirit is involved in every aspect of the life of the church. The Spirit binds the church universal together, forming the temple of the living God out of us, out of you and me. He distributes gifts throughout this body for the good of all of us and to empower us to fulfill our roles in the Missio Dei. The Holy Spirit of Christ is involved in every aspect of the life of a Christian, marking us, leading us, preserving us, but all these wonderful blessings mean nothing if we are not in union with Christ. In this video, I'd like to focus on the initial and vital ministry of the Holy Spirit as the agent of our salvation. Understanding the biblical truth of salvation demands a bit of sophistication on our part as we're tempted to use the slogan, Jesus saves, without digging into the details of that truth. For our brief purposes, we'll consider the whole of salvation in two parts, atonement and application of atonement, neither of which should be separated from the other. Atonement, as we've discussed in other videos, is the reconciliation of God and people. Though the word is not used in the New Testament, in the person of Jesus and his sacrificial death on the cross, we see its reality. By this sacrifice, people are at peace with God, no longer enemies. In addition to the universal plain truth of Romans 5, the descriptive passage of Romans 53 informs our understanding of the breadth of atonement made by Christ for everyone, everywhere, in every way. All sin is atoned for, but not all people are saved. That takes us to the second facet of salvation, its application. In His sovereignty, God has made the blessings of the atonement effectual only to those who place their faith in Jesus Christ. In other words, all people can be saved, but only those who will believe are saved. 
It's here at this point of application that the Holy Spirit becomes the central figure of the Trinity in making salvation a reality to fallen men. The Spirit applies the blessings gained in the atonement by Christ by bringing sinners into union with Jesus Christ. The Bible doesn't use that phrase, union with Christ, but it forms the idea most commonly by using the term in Him, as in those who are in Him. For example, the first great promise of the application of atonement in Romans chapter 8 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are what? In Christ Jesus, in union with Him. The forgiveness of sin becomes effectual to those souls that are in union with Christ. So the question then is, how does one become in union with Christ? And the answer is, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, who is empowered to create that spiritual union where it did not exist before. A more familiar term to most Christians is born again. Jesus himself uses this term to explain to Nicodemus how a person comes to be in him. He says to Nicodemus that unless one is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Nicodemus thinks in purely outward terms, and, and that's as we would expect as from a, from a Pharisee. But Jesus is telling him something altogether different from his day-to-day -day experience. Being born again would be a spiritual rebirth. You see, humankind born under the curse of Adam as a fallen people cannot be a part of the kingdom. Only when we are born again, made in union with Christ, spiritually reborn and put in Him, only then does the forgiveness of the atonement apply to us and it enables us to become kingdom citizens. How does this happen? Even Jesus says that the spiritual transformation is a mystery. But mysterious as it might be, we can discern the separate components of this vital ministry starting with conviction. Conviction refers to the Spirit's work of convicting the world of sin and its impending judgment. It is through the ministry of the Holy Spirit that we become aware of sin and our separation from God. We become aware of our helpless condition, our inability to save ourselves. It's only when our soul awakens to this peril that we even see the necessity of Jesus and become open to faith in Him. That's the point where we make the fateful decision to receive the gift of God in Christ or reject it. Conviction is the point where the gospel becomes the most beautiful thing we've ever heard, and it becomes this invitation that some will accept and others will reject. To accept the invitation is to put our faith in Jesus as Savior and to be regenerated. This regeneration is what we refer to as conversion. This is our response of repentance and faith to the invitation of the gospel. The Holy Spirit works in this action. As Herschel Hobbes says, he works in a person's believing on Jesus. The Holy Spirit points the convicted sinner to Christ, his only hope, and enables him to turn to Christ in faith and to trust him. This enabling is not to be uh, underestimated because as fallen people, we are fully self-reliant and without the Spirit's influence, we would not turn from ourselves to Jesus. Regeneration is the result of this belief and it is wholly the work of God in the Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, fallen human beings are acted upon and given a new life, an immortal life, unlike the life that we inherited from Adam. To restate the mercy inherent in the conviction and the conversion of sinners, God has graciously acted on behalf of sinners, providing to them what he requires of them in life, death, and the resurrection of his son. It is over this bridge across the infinite chasm that separates us from God that the Spirit walks us. 
To think about all of this and grasp the immensity of God's grace and salvation is to see the first glimmers of the place of the Holy Spirit in the life of Christians and of Jesus' church. This is the entry point through which every Christian passes coming into the kingdom and it is the Holy Spirit of Christ who is the agent that brings us through. But this is just one component of his multifaceted ministry, the rest of which we will learn about in the videos that follow. Once a believer is born again, that is, in Christ, a whole new life of learning to live in holiness, of growth in Christ-likeness, is set out before us. The subsequent work of the Spirit then turns to conforming us to the image of our Savior, a lifelong process that none of us will fully master. Cooperate with the work that the Spirit is doing in your life and know all the blessings that God has laid out for your life. God bless you, my friends.